Welcome back to Neo Learning Community. I'm Rosy Vega Barrio. I am your superintendent. I'm really excited to welcome you back to the last nine weeks of the year. I can't believe that uh, we are already here. The year has flown by and um, just like every other, every year we are at the fourth nine weeks and it's really busy. A lot of events happening everywhere in every campus and at the district level. And so that is not gonna be uh, any different this year. And so that's the reason why, you know, I, I made a decision to reach out to you all, as you all know, this last nine weeks, we have a lot of testing going on across um, the district for the end of the year to include state testing. And so it's of the utmost importance that our kids are showing up to school on time and ready to learn and to apply what they have learned. And so the only way that we could do this is by having your support um, until the end. This is our final stretch of the year. So I thank you so much to all the parents who have made a commitment to make sure that our students are here every single day. We have students who have not been absent all year long. And for that, I commend you because I know it's really, really hard uh, to do that. Uh, for those students who are still working through that. Um, parents, we're here to help you. We're here to help you, you're not alone. So please reach out to the campus, uh, to your specific teacher or teachers that serve your child to see what else can we do to make sure that your child or children are going to finish this year successfully and that they are going to be ready to welcome a new year. And so with that said, we have a few events happening um, this uh, next couple of months, and we need to support uh, in being um, to attend these events or to stay alert in everything that is happening. I know, so, you know, we work and there's so many things that we need to do, uh, but there's ways, there's ways of staying connected uh, through email, and of course, text messaging, and of course, our newsletters that go out weekly uh, at each of the campuses, and of course, video uh, recordings such as this one, conferencing as well. So please, please make sure that you stay abreast of that. Uh, we are going to have several um, informational meetings, uh, not just at the end of this year, but all the way into the new year regarding the new accountability system. Uh, the state uh, is now has made recommendations for um, the uh, a new accountability system, which we ne all need to know what those changes are and how does that affect your child, your campus, and of course, our district as a whole. So more so than ever, we need to make sure that we are working together, um, that we are working together to make sure that um, our kids are being served and that, um, that there's a line of communication open for everything, every decision that's being made. And so with that, we have also, um, it looks like we're about to adopt a calendar for the new year. Thank you all for submitting your surveys um, unanimously from the students and teachers and staff and parents that submitted surveys. Um, calendar B was uh, the one that had the highest uh, voting and selections, and so that will be presented to the board next Wednesday um, so that uh, they can um, uh, verify the information and make a decision for approval for next year. As well, know that's what we utilize to um, get things going for the new year. And so, as soon as that is adopted, then uh, we will let you all know um, as well so that you all can start making um, the necessary. Uh, plans uh, as the new year is going to be here uh, faster than you know that. Um, so the other thing that we have uh, as far as events uh, this Saturday, we have an egg hunt at the Kyle Park at 11 o'clock. So we hope uh, that you all can join us, uh, bring in your kids, your neighbors, uh, and of course your baskets, right? Your Easter baskets. It doesn't matter whether it's just, you know, it's for all ages. So come on out, have a good time. It's being sponsored by uh, El Paso Parks and Recreation and our uh, County Commissioner, um, Ileana Olguin. 
So we will also be there as a district to um, kick off our spring registration um, that is going to be taking place uh, starting um, Saturday. It's very important that we begin that process because that's how we um, are able to provide our kids with um, schedules ahead of time and for us to be able to work exactly what it is that we're going to need. So aside from that, um, it was very important for me to send uh, this uh, recording out to everyone um, before I send an official letter out to parents this Friday. As you all know, uh, there's been some um, challenges with public school enrollment around the nation decreasing, uh, steadily decreasing across the nation, of course, the state. And that's the same thing for us uh, in Tornillo. And so it, it is um, sad that, um, you know, we, we keep losing children. Um, one, the childbirth rate is um, very, very low here in Tornillo. And um, the young families that are having children are opting to get closer to their jobs. Therefore, moving out of Tornillo. And that is causing some major challenges. Um, like I said, not just for Tornillo, but um, every school out there in the nation. And so uh, why is this important for us to have this conversation? We have been tracking and looking at this data closely for the last five years, because like I said, the enrollment keeps on shifting and not in the right direction. It keeps going down. And therefore, there's challenges that come along the way whenever we have a drop in enrollment. Um, what does that mean is that, you know, we have less children, therefore less funding. And so let me give you an example here. Um, in the last five years, you can see that we started with 1,025 students. And right now we're at, um, snapshot was 829. But if you look at where we're at currently, we're at 813. And so our projection for next year is that we are going to be um, ending up or starting up with 780 students. And so that is significant. That is significant uh, from the 1,025 students that we started off uh, five years ago to now. Every time that enrollment decreases, does our funding. And without funding, we cannot um, provide a lot of the things that we were currently uh, providing. But uh, the board and um, administration, we have made a commitment to um, our district that we are going to do everything in our power to make sure that our kids do not go without. Um, that means without certified teachers or that we are not going to cut programming. And that's what we're trying to avoid. And so, but there does need to be a significant reduction of uh, funding that is going to not being, that we are not gonna be able to plan for that like we used to. Uh, the ESSER funding is now gone. And therefore that's what has kept us alive these last couple of years that has helped us move and keep our, our staff. And because of the low, low numbers, um, we are going to need to make some uh, decisions, some critical decisions, yet uh, these decisions uh, are exciting, you know, but we do need to make sure that the community is aware and that we listen to your questions and that we're able to answer those questions. And therefore, it's so important that all these meetings that we are going to be having the next couple of months that um, you are coming in and asking questions and not only asking questions, but that you're able to be part of the process. Um, so what is it that we are going to be doing? So if you look at this uh, enrollment totals for next year, our elementary pre-K through second is now going to be at approximately 161 students, which is very, very low. Um, and the, the um, intermediate, we are planning 
to keep our fifth graders and serve them there as sixth graders in order for us to be able to utilize and not lose the staffing that we have. Uh, that's the only way that we can do that, um, and the best way to utilize resources as well. And then uh, the secondary, there will be a, a total of 408 students, which is very, very low for a secondary uh, group of students. And so what we are uh, wanting to do, because this year um, we, we had, for those of you that have middle school students, sixth, seventh, and eighth this year, that was the campus that was affected the most when it comes down to scheduling because we didn't have um, the personnel to be able to provide a flexible schedule where our kids would be able to have bands if that's what they wanted to do in the morning. And then, um, you know, they could have done art in the afternoon because since we share teachers at the high school uh, and they have to, uh, travel from one uh, building to the next, they were tied to only the AM or the PM at that uh, specific campus. And therefore it made it very difficult with schedules. Um, and I know that, you know, kids been through several changes this year uh, as far as schedules and um, it just worked out. And so uh, because of the fact that we are um, needing to make some, we're, making some recommended uh, changes um, here is that we need to make sure that our programs that we have worked really hard to bring in under like for example the um, college and career readiness we want to make sure that those do not um, fall um, and go below what we are offering you know we're trying to get and provide more offerings for our people, for our kids, so that when they do leave the Rio, that they are going to be college career ready. And the only way we could do this is by shaving off some budget allocations from other areas. And so how do we plan to do that? We are proposing a consolidation. Uh, what that means is that because of the small numbers, there's a lot of empty rooms, um, and therefore, you know, just the resources that we're utilizing and having to pay right now um, are not being maximized. And so we are ready this coming year. This is something that we have been looking at and planning, strategizing, like I said, for years, uh, for the last five years, because we knew that this day was going to come. So we're here now. And so these are the proposed um, consolidated plans. Um, that our seventh and eighth grade um, uh, grade levels are housed at the high school uh, so that they're able to uh, be provided flexible scheduling. And not only that, that in uh, seventh and eighth grade, our kids will now have access to advanced classes, which right now the only advanced class that we are able to provide was algebra. Um, and so we want to make sure we do that ahead of time and that we are able to offer that with the people that we have. And then of course, uh, for our current fifth graders to remain at the intermediate and be served there as sixth graders, since they're already there, the kids know, the ki uh, you know, the staff and, and, um, and know, you know, there's gonna be really not much of a change there other than some of the teachers from the junior high to go in and serve our kids in sixth grade. And so, um, and then, of course, this is the major one, um, the relocation, just the relocation of um, sending all of our pre-K, our Head Start, our Head Start to our second grade uh, students to uh, the building, the junior high building. Uh, we have been um, preparing for this. As you all know, um, the board approved um, the use of some ESSER funding for us to be able to have uh, a new cafetorium, which is uh, the gym in the back will now be able to serve, um, be the cafeteria, because right now the cafeteria at the junior high is very small and is not able to um, serve that many kids. And so this big, it's one of our biggest uh, gyms. And so we are um, making that into a cafeteria as well. And so, 
we're going to be able to provide three lines of um, starting lines for our kids. So instruction is not interrupted and we're able to uh, get more kids in and serve our kids uh, faster um, without having to lose staff. Um, and that's what we're trying really hard not to do. And so not only that, we know that um, there'll be some savings as far as the building not being utilized all day. Um, and uh, not only that, there'll be more administrative supports and instructional supports if we consolidate. Uh, there will be no need for um, travel time for special programs and the blocking of uh, flex scheduling. And so we're excited about that. And the most important one is that now we will have one, um, one security guard per campus, because right now we don't have, we share one between the intermediate and the junior high. And so by doing this, we will now have one safety officer at each of the campuses and our SRO will have easier access to the upper campuses. I know that this is something that um, we have discussed this um, with uh, parents that have been showing up over the years about um, what could we do. And I know parents, uh, some of you all have expressed, you know, it would make it so much easier for us to have all the kids in one area. And so I think this is our opportunity. But like I said, we want to make sure that um, those close to $1 million dollars uh, that we need to cut for next year due to the lack of enrollment uh, or the decrease of enrollment that nobody is going to be affected by this. So um, if we can please, um, like I said, go ahead and 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 come to our meetings. Uh, if you have questions and you can't make the meetings, please email our campus administrators, email us, email board members, you know, uh, this is what we're planning on doing. And, um, you know, we're, we're fine tuning all of the details right now to make sure that um, every, this is a, a, a good transition for everyone. And so, you know, um, please make sure that if, you know, there's right now, I believe we have, thir no, we do, we have 13 kids in Head Start. But when it comes to kinder, we usually get double that, um, those students. And so, you know, we keep stressing the importance of starting early um, for our kids. And so we do need, it's never too late. You know, yes, we're in the fourth nine weeks, but we need students to come in. You know, Head Start is always here to help uh, register the students. Don't wait a year. I know sometimes we think, oh, San Chiquitos are little. Um, but we, our kids need that help. And so, you know, if you have, we're, you know, only a call away, we're only, you know, our offices are always available for you to, to be able to ask those questions or suggestions uh, that you might have. Uh, we're always open for that. Uh, so on Friday, you all will be receiving a, a formal letter with these um, consolidated uh, recommendations uh, based on our need right now, a million dollars for the district our size is very significant and uh, something needs to, to be done. And like I said, you know, we, we pride ourselves in the fact that we have worked really hard to uh, keep the people that we have, um, but, you know, moving forward, if somebody leaves our district, um, conversations will need to be had about does that position, um, th is that position needed in our district? Um, because our racials right now are higher uh, staff to student ratio. And so we want to make sure that uh, moving forward, uh, that we are communicating that information, but um, not only that, that we all are all in the know of what it is that we all need to do. So I'm excited about uh, these proposed uh, consolidated plans, uh, but I would love to be able to hear um, questions that you might have uh, that we would be more than happy to answer and um, 
you know, that we have more of an accessible conversation, not just through a recording like this, but uh, we are going to have different coffee with uh, the administrators be on the lookout for that. Uh, we are going to have those um, dates on the letter uh, that's going to be going out on, on Friday. Okay, so please make sure that if you can't attend, they okay, said an email, a call, you know, uh, I can, I'm, I'm more than sure that I'm going to continue to have these recordings because I want to keep you all abreast of what's going on, especially with accountability changing. And uh, the legislative session is going on right now. And therefore that also, we don't know how that is going to impact uh, funding for the next two years. And so there's a lot of things that are happening um, that we need to address. Uh, but once again, our focus is to make sure that safety is um, first and foremost um, at the top of the list when it comes down to making any type of plan or recommendation. And right now, um, because we knew that this was coming, uh, I'm sure that you have seen when you have driven up to the upper campuses, we have invested some of our uh, safety funding that we received through grants um, and also through our general fund that uh, we have put um, the perimeter wall that uh, Governor Abbott uh, requested for us, all schools to have. And so we have made significant changes there, um, which that leads me to, I'm sure that you've seen some movement also up at the upper campuses and here on the main street. Uh, finally, uh, remember two, two years ago, we applied for, um, a, a grant, a community-based grant for lighting and for uh, sidewalks. And because of COVID, uh, everything was stalled. And now, you know, we got um, information that, um, that they're starting the construction. So, you know, uh, Oil Mill uh, will have, um, will have the, uh, the uh, sidewalk uh, going from the railroad all the way to uh, the upper campuses and around Coyote, uh, Coyote Drive, um, and then also here on Cobb Street. And so we're excited about this, those changes that are happening because everything that happens outside of or in the community impacts our schools. And the same thing, our schools impact our community. So parents, thank you so, so much for being a great partner. Uh, we're here uh, to move forward um, and work together. Please, please, please make sure that um, communicate with us. We want to keep your kids here. We want them to be able to graduate uh, and go out and do amazing things. Come back, come back and make the meal their place of, you know, where they can come in and be a, be a home for them um, and work if they need to be here. Um, so, that's what we're pressing because right now we're close to 60, 65% of our community is uh, retirees. And so, you know, um, we love them to death, uh, but we all the other 30 plus percent of individuals um, are not having children or, or not having enough children or they're moving out. Uh, so, you know, maybe because of work or, simply because they want to get closer to their jobs. And so we understand that too, but we want to keep them here. So thank you all very much. Uh, we will be sending that letter out um, on Friday and uh, with those dates. Okay, thank you. And once again, thank you for being a great partner and let's give it our best this fourth nine weeks. Thank you for everything that you do.